Data in Singapore is expensive. Prepaid solutions at least cost $5 a gigabyte and postpaid solutions like Circles Live still at least cost about $3 a gigabyte. What if I told you that M1 actually has a solution where they give you 100 gigabytes of data for 5 days for $15? Sounds pretty good. Well, that's what we're going to be reviewing, kind of, today. The M1 prepaid tourist SIM. 100 gigabytes of data for $15. So let's just get the benefits of the card out of the way. You get 100 gigabytes of data, you get 500 of minutes of local calls and 100 text messages, and you get 20 minutes of international calls to anywhere. Great for tourists, but of course, what everyone wants to know about is 100 gigabytes of data. But let's talk about my experience of getting it first. It seems as if this SIM is exclusive to M1 shops. I haven't seen any 7-Eleven carry it. But that being said, my experience getting this from an M1 shop is really easy. Even if there's a lot of people there, I just say, Hey, I want to get a prepaid SIM. And within 5-10 to 10 minutes, I'm out with the SIM card. It also came for cutouts for nano SIM, micro SIM, and the typical SIM size. And a nice thing about this SIM card is that it doesn't activate until you insert the SIM into your phone and make a phone call out, which is great if you want to keep it until a certain period of time. Now we use this card because we were working in a place where we needed to wait for long periods of time and it was remote so there's no Wi-Fi. So this seemed like a great solution for us to share the data as a hotspot and that's what we wanted to use the 100 gigabyte of data for. So are there any limits to this 100 gigabytes of data? It seems like an awful lot for quite cheap. If you ask the M1 people's store reps or even read the terms of conditions on the website, there is absolutely no mentioning of data throttling, which is great. So when I insert the SIM card into my phone and started a hotspot, I was getting LTE speed similar to about 30 megabits a second down. So that's about four megabytes a second down at max which is great. But here's the catch. There is no data throttling at all. They are truthful in that. Never had I a case where I was on 4G and I was getting really slow speeds. But the big compromise is that you cannot use the high speeds for long periods of time. If they detect you using 4G speeds at max-ish for about 10 to 20 seconds, they will drop you to 3G or more specifically HSPA+, Plus, which tops out at around 1 to 1.2 megabytes a second. Now granted, 1 to 1.2 megabytes a second is not bad. It's perfectly fine if you're watching even 1080p YouTube on your phone. But if you're sharing it among a big pool of people, you do notice the speed differences, or if you're downloading a things like a game or an application, you definitely notice the speed decrease. And additionally, the biggest issue with this bump down to 3G is that there is a small period of time where the internet cuts out as it switches back to 3G, which is very annoying because some apps don't know how to handle this change and some apps also are used to having this change on data but not on Wi-Fi, so also it can't handle it. You have to pause the download and restart the download for it to keep going. Now granted, you don't get stuck at 3G all the time. After a while, it would bump you back up to 4G and you continue to get that super fast 4G speeds and it won't bump you back down until you use max amount of speed for about 20 seconds again. So for things like streaming video or even watching live broadcasts, which seems to handle this drop in internet connection perfectly fine, it works great. But for things that don't, for example, downloading apps, downloading games, or even just downloading files in general, it's not as good. Granted, you can lock your phone into a 3G only mode and you'll be totally fine, just that you have slower speeds. So that is a possible compromise. And if you're wondering if you maybe can lock your phone to 4G only and never get thrown back to 3G, the answer is no, you can't do that because what will end up happening is that after a while, you will lose reception totally, which kind of stinks. I, I tried, didn't work. But outside of that issue, it's pretty awesome. I've been very happy with it, 
and I have been using it ever since. I really, really like the fact that I can buy a few beforehand and just activate it whenever I want. Additionally, it activates as if the day you activate it on is the zero day. For example, I can activate it on uh, Monday and I can still use it on Saturday. So it, I have access on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five days and Saturday as well, which is great. So it's not really five days, it's more like six days and I'm very happy about it. Reception is typical M1 reception. I have a M1 postpaid SIM card on this and there was never a case where my postpaid SIM card got reception but my prepaid SIM card did not. And in general, I'm very happy with this and would recommend it if you need a lot of data in a short period of time. That being said though, Singtel just announced their version of this card and they say they have 7 days. So that's going to be my next review once I get my hands on that. So thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments about this SIM card, leave it down in the description below and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.